You're watching Greater Brockton, a special candidates edition. Uh, we have the City of Brockton election on November 7th, and I have sitting here in studio with me Ward 5 City Councilor Ann Beauregard. Ann, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you for having me. I'm Ann Beauregard, the Ward 5 City Councilor. 774-297-4939. And in all honesty, that's we're here to serve. And um, I'm running for re-election. So I know you have a few questions for me, but I wanted to mention that we have a whole lot going on in Ward 5 because people forget we have a hospital, we have an institution of higher learning that celebrated 50 years, we have a new cancer uh, research center and treatment center, and we have two libraries and uh, two elementary schools and a middle school and uh, restaurants and new businesses coming in and successful manufacturers that have been around for decades. So pretty neat stuff. Very busy. Now, you've always been busy, and Now, I did want to tell the viewers that we did originally try yes. to do a Ward 5 debate. Uh, the other candidate chose not to participate. A uh, number of phone calls. I sent an email to try to get her to change her mind. Didn't happen. Uh, she has other ways to get exposure is what I was told, but I didn't think it was fair to the counselor to not be able to be on TV. So hence we're here. Okay. okay? Well, thank you. No, I mean, I realize that she works in Malden and uh, she's a very busy person and, uh, you know, lives in Ward 5 and does a variety of different things and she has her own small business on top of that. So that's, uh, I've run into her on a couple occasions on the campaign path, but um, really, but want we to talk about we tried so yes let's, let's, that's what let's, we want people to know three four times easy yep. because we had to postpone and change around things because yep. we had some more activity in ward five imagine that exactly yes. <laughs> so so ann yeah what you're you're out there talking to your constituents on a regular basis being the city councilor already yes what is the biggest issue you're hearing about in your ward what is the number one issue the number the one number issue couple first couple okay of first couple the number one issue is getting the streets paved Okay, justifiable, no extravagance, no, un, you know, on on how would I say, on um, you know, um, you know, required demands here. They are legitimate, totally justified. And where's our problem? First of all, these streets, in most instances, I'd say 85, 90 percent are private ways, and people are shocked when they find that, that out. People don't realize when they purchased their homes, someone was supposed to tell them they lived, usually their realtor, when the real estate agent selling that. And in most instances, people weren't informed. I will say a lot of times, I'm sure that's a really intense transaction, and they're looking at, what am I getting myself into? And this is gonna cost a lot, interest, et cetera. And that doesn't come into play because they don't understand the dynamic of it. And that doesn't, you know, make people ignorant. It just, it's, it's a very, how would I say, complicated, intricate situation. Why does this happen? Usually it's because developers came in, and I'll cite in Ward 5, for example, because remember, I mean, I moved here in 1962. <laughs> um, my parents bought a camp in alley for 17.5. No one else had lived on it. We we're the first people on the street. I mean, they were building houses in 10 to 15 minutes or so it seemed. The reason I bring that up is when you have a developer coming in and building 60 houses in the course of a year and a half, they are not going to look at the concerns of the individuals moving into them. They're not part of the community. So basically the process is you have to get the streets accepted. Okay, well first okay. of all, so they were private. They should never have been because one of the things that private people, streets don't realize is technically the city does not have to plow. Now, let's clear this up right now. The city does plow because emergency vehicles need to get to a home, a residence for individuals in these concerns, whether it's fire or health concern. So now having said that, yes, it's a very convoluted process to get accepted. So what are we doing about this? We're going to try to change the law. I am working right now, people don't realize that, that you see a woman at city council meetings, lovely young woman, because she just came on with us in June, because the former legislative council for the city of Broughton was uh, Mark Day. he became a judge. And uh, he was there for 27 years, so big change. We have this lovely young woman, educated in a, attorney in the municipal, uh, you know, uh, how would I say, it, laws. She is working with me now 
to work on this, make it a home rule petition. Because there is no reason to ask all of these residents. When we're talking about almost 40 streets. You and I know a home rule petition goes to the legislature. Yes, as so in the state legislature. So they basically change the law. Because Help us the way change it the works law. now yes. is each councilor gets a couple of streets to do a year, and then all the money is gone. One street, or sometimes two, depends on the year. Yeah, unless it's very teeny streets. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and streets are expensive because it's not just the street; it's not just the paving. It's the pipes. It's the water and sewer mains. I went through it. I, I'm in. I'm in one. And my street. It was a ten-year process to get my street. I didn't happen to live on it at the time. It got paved when I was gone, and then I came back and it was paved, so I was pretty happy. But, but it was a, it's a process, and people don't process. understand it. And it's really important that streets do get paved. First of all, safety. Mm -hmm. Second of all, it's not right for people to be paying all these taxes. In some instances, 40 years someone's lived on a street, never seen it paved. No, this needs to change. It needs to change in, you know, in more than one way, certainly the procedure. Second, it needs to be for the revenue of the city. And one of the, the reasons we talk about that is I highlighted first when we started talking about businesses that are in Ward 5 and how we're working to get more businesses in Ward 5. What happens when a business comes into the community? In most instances, it becomes advantageous to the tax revenue of this city. Mm -hmm. because they're manufacturing, they're selling, they're servicing, etc. And, and this, is, this is what we want to see. Now we want to see the right business. I want to clear that up right now also. We don't want to have, a, let's say, you know, a, a trash um, st you know, unit at every single corner. We don't want to see, and, we'll work, and we've addressed that now, automobile repair places at every corner. We need to concentrate on having the services people are seeking, the entertainment aspects that people are seeking, and um, other opportunities that are coming along in the world of industry that we don't realize. And this is why we work closely with several agencies. I've been involved with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce in various components for and almost 20 years you've now. You've been an ambassador over there, and you've yes. regularly gone there. Um, now, besides businesses in your ward, there's housing. There's housing yes. Housing going up every place, every corner, every little stand. Well, well we're a, trying to control that, too, yes. there's a big project that's being mentioned in Ward 5 off of, off of Thatcher Street over well, near the Well, okay, Pondrick. this is very... That this is, is an very issue that um, you've been very vocal on. What, what's your position okay, on Okay, first that? of all, we need to understand. This is how people, you know, you look at a map, and we've all been through the census, and we have maps available of Brockton. They're really handy, to be honest with you. And they're available in, in the city hall, and I have them. And these are very informative. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because the project is across the street. Massasoit is in Ward 5. The project is in Ward 4. The reason it becomes a concern for everyone is because this is what they refer to as 40R. That means for residents. R stands for residents in this case. And with this is a stipulation that it's supposed to be affordable or in some instances low-income housing. In this particular case, they're seeking for affordable housing 175 units. I began to get vocal on this because first of all, Brockton, now mind you, there's 351 other towns and cities in the Commonwealth has more affordable housing than any other city or town in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Now, again, people are going through their daily lives, doing life, doing, you know, and they don't realize this is happening. Our job is to educate, because I, I ran on transparency. I continue to, to do that. You have the right to know what's going on, and then you decide what you think. Well, I, off the top, I just knew I wasn't in, interested in this. We have more affordable housing by 1,000 units more than any other community in the Commonwealth. We, we each, everyone has, um, I'm going to call it a quota. And not only do we have our quota, we have 1,000 more units over that. Mm -hmm. That's an awful lot. What does that mean? That means, well, a lot more traffic. But on top of that, that doesn't mean large revenue source for the city. So then you wonder why this budget cuts with the schools and why there's road repair that's not transpiring. And there yeah. would be parents and children living in those units. Generally, and, and children don't live by themselves. So, yeah, right. so, so, so it's not a, like a senior complex where there no. wouldn't be any kids. So it would have a great impact on the schools. The schools yes. are under budgeted. They're overcrowded. Yes. There aren't enough of them. I know like on the south side of town, which is a different ward, 
there isn't even enough schools in that area. You said you have two. I have two. I have the Downey, right. and I have the Plouffe Academy, and then we also have the East Middle School. Okay. Now, mind you, again, from across the street on one side, you know, when the, the ward ends and another one starts, Ward 6 is the Ashfield School. Yeah. So I just want to clear that up because it gets a little confusing, and it's understandable. There's no sign this is what, entering. What's Baker in? And I have the Baker School, yes. Okay. okay. The Baker School, which is, is so... so your mic yeah. is slipping down, and oh. I'm going to move it up. I oh, okay, grab we're, this here. kind of... Yeah, on, moving on. along. There we go. We want to make sure we make hear sure you. that we hear. Yeah, so I have the Baker School, and I, to be honest with you, Baker School is still so relatively new, sure. and I've been to all of them on more than one occasion. The Plouffe Academy was part of the whole new school revitalization, along with the Unknown and the Angelo. Correct. And then we had that second influx where we were hoping for three more, and we had two, and that would be the Baker. And then, again, it would be um, the George, as we call it. Right. So, and that, again, that's on the north side. But what, again, it's not like all east side people go to each one of those schools. Sometimes they provide various services, which are vital to the students, the parents, and the teachers, and other people servicing them. And that's why they, uh, they find themselves in another um, location. Now, having said that, I am not against neighborhood schools, and I'm not against choice I miss school choice I never had children so I can't really say that what I know is we we want our schools provided for and yes we get federal funding and state funding and also the community provides Do funding you agree with the the move that the city is going to uh, make to sue the state to get out oh I'm, I'm all for that and it's really sad that we have to take those steps but yes we have a, a convoluted formula that's been detrimental to communities like Brockton and uh, you mentioned that you're going to be interviewing my colleague later mm -hmm. and um, so I'll let her elaborate on that Junie Sullivan and she's been serving for and I had the pleasure of knowing her and again this is how you get involved she was parent um, the PTA, and then she was you know, involved with the community schools. I and got that's involved how you with that aspect. Because you've been yes. involved in like 22 organizations over the well, course of time that I know. Let's talk about for fun. Library. Let's clear that yeah, up. Yeah, yes, yeah. and then but, other but, times. But you're a so community really. activist, and the reason you got involved and the reason you ran is because you wanted to carry that to the next level. Yes, and I mean, I feel like my education demonstrated that. I mean, I have my master's certificate in women in politics and public policy, and you learn the whole process of all this, which you can apply. But also, my, I have my bachelor's in finance, and this is all about money, and I had my associates in marketing, and those were two that I could apply. I also had a professional certificate in nonprofit management. But that is what, you need to be parts of many things in the city. We need our nonprofits, but we don't have to have an overabundance. We need restaurants, but we, we can't have a restaurant on every corner. We need automobile repair places, but once again, we don't need one on every street. We need a balance, and that's what I'm excited about, that we've done a lot more work with planning, and it's been very inclusive. And that, that's important. I mean, I can be reached at 774-297-4939 because you say a lot now, and then somebody might have a question on Absolutely. it. So I think that part's you're, important. You're, you're always accessible, and you've, you've done your own show here. You've done Ward yeah, 5 yes. and 10, um, which I've, I've had uh, 23 I've, of them. Yeah. I've offered every elected official in Brockton over the course of time the ability yeah. to do their own show. There are only a few that have taken me up on it, the mayor, um, you, uh, State Representative Michelle Dubois, and then we did kind of a before the council show, which the council president hosted and then brought the various councilors on. But the whole idea of government access and public access is to communicate with your constituents. It's one, not everybody has cable, but enough people have cable that I think it's a great way to do it. So I'm glad you're doing it. We want to keep encouraging. Oh, yes, I, I definitely didn't realize want... you were up to 23. That's good. Yeah, well, it's it will be 23 this month. Yep. Okay, so and, then, that's... and then we're getting ready to do one of your ward meetings. You're going to have a ward meeting coming up. Yes. I don't want to date this too much because I want to yeah, run this that's, that's all the exactly. way up to the I have a, And that'll be my sixth ward meeting. I have them in different locations. Again, I had one at the Plouffe Academy recently. Mm -hmm. Over 50 people attended. The hot topic was a Thatch Street project. But let's remember, there's a lot of other concerns. You asked the primary one was paving streets. Yeah. The other one, since downtown, one side of downtown is included in Ward 5, and the other side is Ward 2, is two-way traffic on Main Street. It totally needs to happen. I might, you know, I swear you're ready to get up in the middle of the night and switch the traffic because it, it's so necessary. And the biggest reason now, not only economically would be vital and, of course, would help the traffic jams, is public safety. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, I'm big on the fire thing. And um, that's an, that was one of my projects, and I continue to do so, to see 
that the Crescent Street Fire Station is open at full throttle during the summer months. Why does that one get picked on every you know year? What? I'm just I, I don't look at it as being picked on. Okay, um, okay. Chief Michael Williams emphasized that that's where, if they're going to look at it, the least amount of calls were, were made. Okay, okay. okay. Now, I still want that to take place because you never say, oh, okay. Now, you don't sit on your laurels, as the expression goes, but primarily because people have a right to have a fire engine come if they have a fire problem and other problems. And that's what people need to understand, too. They're usually the first responders when there is um, an emergency. And again, respiratory, other. And that's kids, adults, and of course, you know, elderly, you know, concerns. So that's huge. And I also wanted to, because we do have all of the schools now. Mm -hmm. We do have the three, you know, I say the three elementary and the board of one with Asheville and then also the middle school and Massasoit Community College. And before, you know, kids would go home from school and that would be that. No, there's plenty of activities after school. There's plenty of activities going on at night in many of the schools. There's tons of stuff going on on weekends in the schools. Sure. And it just, and Massasoit, weekend college, night college, day college, um, they need to have a fire engine, you know, come. Let's, let's so, go to Massasoit for a minute. Yes. Disappointed, I'm sure, you, I know I am, I teach there, so self, you know, full disclosure. Christo's got torn down. Yes. It was supposed to be a health sciences complex that happened there in the downtown campus. Didn't come to pass. The governor killed it. What do you think you can do as one city councilor to, to try to turn that around or, or, or advocate? You, you're, you're passionate about advocating for things, so just curious. Well, first of all, I don't think it's a done deal. You okay. can't act defeated. You can only act determined. I'll cite on one example that I've been involved with over the years. I don't want to see the power plant. No, right. it's in Ward 4. That always makes me laugh, too. It's not my ward. It's not my problem. It always is. We're all part of a community. There's a murderer. Mass murder in Ward 1, it's a problem in Ward 3. I mean, you sure, know, you just, exactly. you don't walk away from anything like that. So, no, I didn't want the power plant. I wasn't alone <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. It's still not here. You don't act defeated. You only act determined. Heartbreaking that a decision, and, and one that's so detrimental um, to the community, to the individuals that seek to educate themselves in much needed professions. I mean, so they're not extravagances by any means. No, we're, we're not defeated. Um, we're determined. Uh, there's plenty of ways we can work on affiliations. I mean, I work on grant programs. I work with other individuals. I, I believe we'll see it. I don't believe we'll necessarily see it the first way it was conceived, but it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. So let's not look at that and think, no, I don't have some secret knowledge right now. I want to clear that up. But no, we're going to see change. And we're always seeing change. Some positive, some not so positive. But I'll cite an example. We have a lot of foreclosures still. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and some people, yes, okay, they bit off more than they could chew. But that's actually a very, very minute part of uh, the foreclosures. Unfortunately, a great deal of foreclosures come from illness, job loss, and uh, other, you know, circumstances that have, you know, exist. I don't say, say, for example, maybe divorce. Okay. Now, having said that, we have a program with the Attorney General's office to address these foreclosures so that the, the building, a house, small home, et cetera, turns around and it becomes part of a small program and people have the opportunity to acquire, you know, to renovate it. And, and I want to say, like, you know, Sometimes it's small, painting, whatever, and other times it's much larger because it's been neglected for so long. So you're helping a small business. You're cleaning up blight because, let's face it, a lot of these homes get over. And then third, you're putting this bank out there for sale and allowing someone to have the opportunity to purchase it, have their own home, and become on the tax rolls. It takes more than a minute. I want to clear this up right now, but it exists. And all this is taking place because why? You work collaboratively with the gentleman that's employed by the Attorney General's office and uh, two of his colleagues. He's here Monday through Friday in downtown Broughton at 60 School Street, 70 School Street. And that uh, we now have that. We also have the Attorney General's office 
and representatives come from there regularly. I'm going to say once a week, every other week. We also have the Broch and Redevelopment Authority, and that's under the auspice, because one again, one of these joint situations that informs people, okay, we have this house on such such a street. Uh, looks like there's going to be painting needed, roof repair, but, you know. Are you interested? People can find out about these things. All this is downtown Broughton. All this is not secret. We have a city website, and it has a great deal of information on it. And I will say, like any other website, um, unless you know exactly what you're looking for, it takes more than a minute. But it's just like a long time ago, the yellow pages. Yeah. <laughs> Something that, yeah, exactly. we have to go, go on. But the fact of the matter is that exists in this city. That turns something around. Again, I'm going to emphasize it takes more than a minute. Because unfortunately, we don't have enough people doing all the jobs that we need well, done. It's, it's the instant gratification with the internet. Everybody thinks they can get the answer in a minute. You talk collaboration, and that's a really good point. I'm so, going to ask you about that specifically with your council colleagues. Yes. The way I look at it, I... I live in a different ward, but I have a board councilor and I have four at larges. So the way I look at it is I have five representatives, and you're right, a lot of the issues, even though it's in one ward, it does affect the whole city. But what yes. about the relationship with the chief executive, with the mayor's office, okay? In terms of the council and the, the mayor's office working together, how do you see collaboration working in the city? Is it working well? Does it need improvement? Um, you have worked with a lot of people over a lot of years. What's your take on it as this is your first term and you're seeking your second term? Okay, I'm seeking my second term. I want to ma mention this too. And this will be the final time I will run for Ward 5 City Council because one of the things we want to see is change and we want to see things turning around. So the whole idea is for me to run, learn stuff, so I can pass it on to the next person. I knew more than a lot of individuals, not because I'm brilliant, but because I had been involved in it. None of this is Trump secret, and once again, I cannot tell you enough. You can come to every single one of these meetings. Sometimes you're like, wow, because people don't realize how much there is. I'm going to go to parking authority tonight. Why? Because it's supposed to be a $10 million parking garage coming to Ward 5, plus parking is an issue. There's a shortage of parking in the downtown area, and that's mm -hmm. detrimental to both courthouses, detrimental to some of the businesses, and we want to turn that around. So being solution-driven is being part of the process. So let's talk about it in this way. Yes, I love my colleagues, we, you, know, we, you know, and I'm going to miss Shana, but Shana is a twofer because she's also with Congressman Lynch's office, so she's been really great with that. Um, I get along with them. Um, some of us have known each other for years. I've driven some of them crazy because I've been persistent about things. And others, it was you know, newer to do that. Um, it's not this, well, I'm not going to tell you this so you won't know. Now, this is always sharing information because at the end of the day, we're all working together on something. But we're the governing body, okay? Having said that, once again, 774-297-4939. If you have questions about this, because it gets confusing, okay? The mayor is the administrative body. Okay, one person, and he has an office with, you know, a team. Okay, but there are a lot of departments. Like someone says, I call City Hall. I said, you realize there's about 14 departments in City Hall? And people don't realize one of them is weights and measures. And even though they say they call City Hall, I count the Board of Health as being in City Hall, even though it's, you know, a, you know, a, a building away. And parking authority, which is a, another building away, because we got so big. Why? Because we're a city of over 100,000 people. So, DPW, uh, I can't say enough good about how, how terrific uh, Larry Rowley is. Just absolutely wonderful, and that just works out really great. Okay, for example, because we talked about the paving in the streets, we talked about it, and now, just so everyone realizes, if you see a light going off on your street, you're not being neglected. The city signed on to a contract to replace every single street light on every pole in the city of Broughton. Let me tell you, there's more than one. One area of the city has already been done, and they're working on another area. So at no time are they neglecting you, but they can't replace the current bulb. They have to do, put the new one in. Correct. So that's a little bit more involved than if you stand up on a chair in your house, <laughs> you take the light bulbs you, know, you mm -hmm. have in, the, in your closet. So that's what I want to clear up. There's no one's being neglected here. No one is you know, saying, we're not taking care of you because you live on this. No, it's, they're going, I'm not going to lie to you, they go on the main streets first you know, because it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that's part of it. So I'm going to stress that. So how would I say that we do this? We work with, I mean, uh, you know, Bob Malley is the parking authority director. Mm -hmm. Absolutely marvelous because we have 
you know, concerns and issues. And we're really excited because we can get those smart parking meters so you'll be able to do the debit credit or what have you. Sure. You won't have to scrounge for uh, quarters. This is, so you look at as who you work with along the way. Now I have the pleasure of working with Corin Capiello, who has been involved with a great deal of social services. That's it, she's the social services, hum, human services administrator for the city of Brockton. We have the opiate treatment program that's been an extreme success and everyone needs to understand the majority of the people that come into the city seeking the treatment are not Brotonians. Mm -hmm. They've come from other communities that do not have those services. We are the only city in Plymouth County. That comes with its challenges. So that's what I want to clear. I want people to clear up. So yeah, we're all working together. Um, I can't thank um, you know the fire chief enough for all he does because again I, I have this little fire paranoia thing going, and I've had a fire before and that that stinks. You know, and nothing was hugely damaged, but it, it's you know it's life changing, and I, I just my heart goes out to anybody who loses you know their home. Is there anything in your two years that you've been really dissatisfied with that you'd like to see turned around? Well, I would like to to get more um, involved, you know, with our, you know community policing. I mean, I deal regularly with Bill Healy, but I knew him for years. Why? Because I was going to the downtown Broughton Association meetings. Again, I want to clear this up. Anyone can come to any of these meetings. There's no sign that says you can't come. They're posted on the city's website. Downtown Broughton Association might not be, but it's always the next one will be November 29th, 8.30 in the morning, 60 school Last Street. Wednesday of the month at 8.30. Yes, except for December. We want to clear that up. Right. Yeah, yeah, because it's in between Christmas and New Year's. And, but we want, to, we want to clear that up. And a great deal of information is powered. And I don't want to go without saying uh, the planning department has been terrific, and we, we love um, the way that they're interacting and what we've got in this really super farmer's market. Again, all this happens in Ward 5 because City Hall's in Ward 5. Board of Health, I can't thank Louis Tartaglia enough and this big change with working on being a community farming, com you know, and just to clear that up, everyone's not going to have chickens. You don't have to worry about everybody having chickens. The fact remains, though, is now we're prepared for those people that choose to do so. Um, it's always a work in progress. I, we have all this information. Every single piece of this information is available to anyone. You are invited to any of these meetings. And you can call me, 774-297-4939. And you don't have to just call me. Other people can inform well, you on that. All the numbers for all the city councils, all the elected officials are up on Channel 12. And they're online. And they're online on the city website. So it's not, yeah. you, you don't have the old phone book anymore to look up the no. city of Brockton. But they're in other places. So, Ann, I'm going to give you, I think Aaron told me five? Five okay. minutes? Huh? 30, sec 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're so going to wind down. Quick, Ann, you get Vote for me, please. I really want to come back and, and finish what I started, more economic development, which we're working on. And you can know about that. More jobs, more revenue for the city working on the fire station, working on changing the situation so we get our paved streets. I mean, there's no conspiracy that we want to deny you that. We're trying to work on a better way to do this. And uh, really, uh, polls are open 7 to 8. November 7th, there's such a thing as absentee ballot. If you know that you're not going to be able to attend, to vote on that day for some reason, we're, you know, and realize that we're all here to serve you. And don't think any other way than th that's what we are. We're public servants. Thanks for coming thank on, you. Ann. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll right. see you on the campaign trail. That went by track. fast. Yeah, thank you. 30, 30 yes. minutes is quick. Uh, yeah. watch, don't, don't leave yet. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Make sure you go out and vote in this election. Do not do what we had in the preliminary, which was 9.5%. We want 10 times that. Thank you for joining us.